Why is it important to have the women on the same level as men? It's just, why not? The biggest positive is that I'm just seeing more and more women doing this kind of work. We're not necessarily competing against a job. There's not only one token female that can get a job, it's the most accomplished person and the person who does their homework, who does their research and works really hard. Women don't have to be just sideline reporters. You can get behind the mic uh, and do play-by-play. -play. I hope a young girl at home is watching this broadcast and thinks, like, I can do that too. Why this is important, what we did today, is showing people it can be done to change some minds out there. That it's not so hard to imagine that this is possible. We need gender parity and also celebrating how much women have done and hope for what women can accomplish. I hope young girls can see this and say, I can do that. Because if they can see it, it's so much more real. This is not something that I thought I would be doing in my career. This is International Women's Day, and in honor of that, we have an all-female broadcast. Very special edition of OHL Hockey, the Oshawa Generals taking on the North Bay Battalion, the very first all-women's broadcast in the OHL. The day was announced, I was working in the Sportsnet newsroom, and Ivanka just heard my voice, and she kind of whipped around and said, is that you? Is, like, is the Hannah in this press release you? And I said, yeah, and she just, like, her face lit up. Um, offered words of advice, words of encouragement, uh, so that was really cool. I hope that's the message that I'm saying for my female colleagues that are younger than me. There's not only one token female that can get a job, it's the most accomplished person and the person who does their homework, who does their research and works really hard, and I think I'd just like to set that example. When I used to work for the Generals, I would often have young fans coming up to me saying, oh, I watch you on TV all the time and you do such a great job and I want to be like you when I grow up and I want to get into sports broadcasting and that in itself was such a thrill for me to hear. To break down those barriers and really have that platform to reach out to the younger population who may be iffy or unsure of their capabilities and to really empower them. I hope young girls can see this and say, I can do that. Because if they can see it, it's so much more real. This is not something that I thought I would be doing in my career. It's a role that's felt really out of reach for me, so to be able to do something like this is huge, and I hope that it's not so hard to imagine that this is possible for the girls and the people that are watching. During tonight's game, there were a lot of tweets. A young girl was watching and was actually allowed to stay up past her bedtime to see this game. So that right there just completely fills your heart. I really hope that this isn't, you know, a one-off. Like, I hope that this is paving the way for, you know, places like the OHL and, and Rogers TV to come up with more ways to include women in roles that are male-dominated. I watched Christine Simpson, you know, doing her thing on Hockey Night in Canada and I just aspire, like even as a you know almost 25 year old woman, I still aspire to have her level of confidence in the workplace. Everyone has their own path, but I kind of, I didn't do it completely on my own, but I didn't have someone like me that I could look to and say, I want to be her someday because there wasn't a me. She didn't have anybody to look up to. Well, now these young girls do have women to look up to, so they know it's possible for them to fill those seats eventually if they work hard enough. So just making that a norm in our society, that's the next step. The key is, do you want to be here? Does something like this inspire you to maybe want to take this on as a career? So if it does, great, that's the hope. We want to inspire, we want to promote confidence. I know I personally don't give myself a lot of credit. I think a lot of women don't give themselves enough credit, but the amount of support from other people gave me the sense that I could do this, despite it being something very new to me. So their confidence inspired my confidence, and I think it's something that a lot of women need to get better at. Stop, stop belittling what you've achieved, feel that confidence.
There was a great moment on the way up to the booth tonight uh, where Hannah Nordman was stopped by a young girl uh, to meet her and, uh, and kind of bent down, shook her hand, and, uh, and it was an inspirational moment. And, and I hope more young ladies are inspired uh, to, to do more and, uh, and follow up on, on the opportunity that was given here today. One of the things I want to make very clear is that this isn't just a one-off. We have people in place who call our games, Mike, Shane, Adam, but they get sick, they miss days, and I've got this amazing team of young ladies who I'll be calling on again in the future. This is not just a one-off game. It would be nice, uh, and hopefully we'll get there one day when it's not looked at as a, being a male or a female role. It's just being a broadcaster, and I think we're getting closer to that, but uh, you know, there is still some work that needs to be done. One of the first gigs that I got doing play-by-play -play and color commentary was uh, with Rogers TV Brampton and we were doing the silver stick game. So I got to the truck in Brampton and I, I walked up and I was like, I'm gonna do this. And I was a little bit nervous, but you know, I was young and I was like, this is it. And I, I bang on the truck door and the producer opens the door and like with the biggest smile on his face, he's like, Sam, you're a girl. <laughs> so I kind of was thrown by it. But if you think about it, Sam McDade, like it, it could be a girl or a guy, I guess they just assumed, which, Assumptions are so big in the industry, I feel like, for roles like this. Color commentating and play-by-play -play should go hand-in-hand -hand with whether you're a woman or a man. You should have the equal opportunity if you've had the experience in the industry. Even if you played growing up, uh, you can still provide that insight on the game. Wouldn't it be great if we're just not even talking about, you know, how many women are doing this and, you know, the women's game versus the men's and she did that. It's just... It's just, we're just all on a level playing field. And I think that's what International Women's Day is really all about, is recognizing that we need parity, gender parity, and also celebrating how much women have done and hope for what women can accomplish. So I just hope that one day, it's not even an issue of talking about how many women are in what roles, that we're all just doing a fantastic job. I knew I wanted to get into sports broadcasting at a pretty young age. I was very lucky. And when I had told my parents, they were very supportive and said, you would be great at this. Um, other adults, not so much saying you, a female in sports broadcasting, good luck. Good luck trying to find a job. And that was the most discouraging thing I could ever hear. But it also kind of fueled me as well, thinking, you know what, I'm going to break these barriers and I'm going to prove all these people wrong. My parents were the biggest supporters growing up and said, if this is what you want to do, prepare yourself and do it very well and you'll succeed. Ultimately, the goal for all of us is to not have to have an all-female broadcast because women are just part of, part of the experience always. But until that is the case, um, we have to absolutely be intentional about you know, placing women in, in visible positions behind the camera, in front of the camera. Um, so we'll just, we'll just keep doing it. In the spirit of International Women's Day, I had the chance to sit down with three influential female broadcasters, Christine Simpson, Tara Sloan, and Ivanka Osmak. Those features were so cool. I mean, to speak uh, to three women that I've looked up to since you know I was a teenager and knew that this is the industry I wanted to go into, it was amazing because it was really organic. I think we're living in a time right now that women are speaking up, so they felt comfortable enough to share their experiences and be honest about them, not really sugarcoat anything that's happened to them in their career. Even with the cameras rolling, but even when the cameras are off, they were just open books. Christine, what positive changes have you seen in the industry for females since you first joined? Well, in the 20 years the, <laughs> since I first joined, hard to believe, the biggest positive is that I'm just seeing more and more women doing this kind of work. More women involved in sports broadcasts of any kind. And even, you know, your broadcast, an all-female broadcast team doing an OHL game. The fact that there are women that can do all of the roles that it takes to, to provide an all-female broadcast team is is so impressive. So I, I just think that that the more you see that, the more normal it becomes. So that's probably been, to me, one of the most positive things that I've seen. Has there ever been a specific obstacle for you where you felt, you know, you really had to rise to the occasion because of your gender? There have been challenges along the way from other women 
which might sound surprising, and but it's it's kind of heartbreaking to hear that sometimes women don't have the best intentions for other women in the industry. We're supposed to be in this together and have each other's back. And that was such a wonderful thing when I started at Sportsnet back in 2007, is that Martine Guyard and Chris Simpson, they were here and they not only were so supportive and so welcoming and helped me out and kind of, you know, showed me the rose, but they're incredibly talented, witty, smart, accomplished women who still have tremendous careers. And I, I look up to them and I consider them fantastic colleagues and also friends. I think a lot of the, the barriers are a little more subtle. I don't think it's a matter of people being so outward about saying, you're a woman, you can't do this job. But there are just these subconscious biases that um, this entire culture hasn't quite gotten away from. In the past, I think we all just sort of put our heads down and do what we're told. And I think women in particular, we don't always stand up for ourselves. And I just feel more of a responsibility, not only to do that for myself, but to do that for other women that maybe don't have the confidence that just comes with being in this industry and with age, you know? And that's one beautiful thing of being, having done this for so long. Uh, I don't worry so much about what other people think and I'll speak my mind. When we look back at 2019, the All-Star Game. In the home stretch. 14.346. That iconic moment. What do you think it will mean for females? I mean, on the ice, I could hear the ceiling shattering. And when I saw what happened on, on social media, I was almost in tears. It was just so impactful. I don't know what it's going to mean. You know, I just think it's like a, it's a really slow process. And sometimes when it comes to education and inclusiveness, people don't know what they don't know. Abigail Dove who's 13 years old, and I could not believe the poise and the confidence that she had. At 13, I certainly couldn't have done it. And it was so cute because she, she wants to be me, and she will. If she really wants to, she should. Well, I've idolized Christine ever since I saw her on TV, and she's one of the reasons I wanted to get into this broadcasting. So being able to work with her, not once, but twice, was a really great experience. She was so incredible. The fact that she put her mind to, you know, she's been writing for SI for Kids for the last year. Uh, she did her homework, she went to practice the day before to talk to some of the players, to get ideas of in-game stories. You know, I just, I loved working with her that day. John, as we get ready to close the book on 2019, it's been an up and down first half of the season for you guys. What are you expecting from your team in the second half of the season? Well, we're excited with the way things are starting to build for us, so we want to carry this momentum forward and keep getting better. The kids take over today for the Next Generation game. With the recent birth of your son, you've added to the next generation of Leaf fans. What does this game mean to you now that you have a new Leaf fan at home? Uh, it gives you a new perspective, a new meaning. Uh, very special to be a part of that. All right, thanks, John. Thank you. The impression that having me and her beside me, like just that visual alone, was talking about the visual that you guys had of the posting just announcing that you're doing this all-female broadcast. That, that just speaks volumes and it goes so far for young girls to be able to see. Well, two goals and three assists for Mitch Marner as the Leaf fans head home from this next generation game. Happy with the 8-6 win, but boy, that's one of the craziest games I think I have ever seen. How were you guys able to claw back and get the win in the third? Uh, I think we stayed confident with ourselves. Uh, we didn't sit back. I mean, we know our team has the ability to come back from any game. Freddie, Freddie made some huge saves there. Our PK with a huge, huge kill there in the third. I just think we stick with it. Uh, we did our game plan and it worked out. Well, Mitch, today's game was very intense and the third period was full of goals. How did you keep your calm and stayed focused throughout this game? Uh, uh, it was pretty hard there in the third. I mean, the adrenaline was running real high. The heartbeat was running real high. But uh, like I said, I think our team stayed patient with it. We did, we did our game plan we wanted to. 
Uh, we have a lot of confidence in our team, no matter the period, no matter the score. I think we showed it today. I think because of how many girls are on it, TV right now, I know that's why I got into it, is by watching them. Because of the girls that are leading the way right now, Tara and Christine, I think it's just going to grow from here and we're going to see a lot more girls on the TV as the years go on. This day has been amazing. I never expected all of this and this is amazing. I haven't, I don't, this is what I want to do when I grow up and I'm doing it right now at the age of 13. All right, you're meeting the coaches, you're talking to the players, you're doing interviews. I mean, seriously, it was, was it more than you thought? Definitely, this is way more than I expected and this has been amazing. One of the classic lines for us is if you can play, you can play. And uh, for me personally, I had uh, ACL surgery over the summer and I worked with Barb Underhill and Haley Wickenheiser to really help me you know, get back up to speed and uh, they were great. And, in helping me throughout my recovery, so um, I think that you know if you're qualified to to do a job, it doesn't matter if you're a male or female, you're you're qualified. So I think that that's where hockey's going, uh, and it's you know great to be a part of it. How do you see things moving forward for female broadcasters? Well, I think you know the 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 biggest thing will be to just uh, you know they don't want to take my job, but they can augment my job, you know, and I, I think that's what we need to uh, make sure, as Christine Simpson likes to say, that you have a seat at the table, right? So we, we just obviously are going to be in a position to reshape Hockey Night in Canada going forward, and I think that'll be a, a part of the thinking is how do we become more diverse, how do we become more representative, uh, and then within the actual work itself is just to make sure that people aren't given cursory positions, make sure that they're uh, given positions uh, that are significant, important, uh, will help to shape the conversation going forward to make uh, the viewer truly benefit rather than have uh, one stylized uh, approach that's uh, the product of a really complex uh, system that's been in place for forever. Um, you know, people think that when we discriminate it's because we're bad people. It's not because we're just bad people. It's because we've had this that we grew up with. Uh, so that's, it's all changing at once. And uh, I, I think, you know, women and uh, broadcasters of color uh, will clearly benefit from this, uh, this new received wisdom. I have a seven-year-old daughter and I would never want her to even have the thought creep into her head that, no, I can't do that. So I think even as small a step as today might be in the big picture, I think it's an important step uh, for any girl to see uh, the women that we have on air here today. And if it influences them in any little way possible to think, you know what, yes, I can do that, I think that's an important step. The thing that's going to resonate with me the most out of this whole project is the support. I have left the industry for the past couple of years and just dabbled in a few broadcasts on the weekends uh, and I posted a photo on social media and I had family members, friends, acquaintances, old bosses, old colleagues, they all reached out and just came together and supported me. So I think that's what I'll remember the most out of this and I hope that that's what women take away from this is that there is support for us to be treated as equals in sports broadcasting. The number one thing I'm going to remember is, you know, like running out the door and like seeing my parents' face. They're just like, we're going to tune in. And just that sense of pride. I had been practicing names and practicing stats and looking things up for weeks leading up to it. But also like knowing when I was walking out the door that I was the most prepared I've ever been. I think that, uh, you know, you build these relationships and it's just not on camera relationships. You build them off the camera as well. So coming back, to the Tribute Community Center, seeing old staff, old coaching staff, um, trainers, and reminiscing about the good times we had because it did not feel like a job. I was very fortunate that coming to work was actually exciting and fun and challenging. When the game finally came and I came up to the arena, walked in that catwalk and looked down, everyone around me was taking pictures because of how ridiculous I was. I was so excited and went, just realized how amazing and how cool this was. The other one moment that sticks out, my sister posted the press release of this game on Facebook, and I just wrote back saying, like, my heart's going a million miles a minute, but I'm really excited to start this. And my big sister, my 40-plus-year-old sister, said, you know I look up to you, right? Which is crazy to me, because I spent my whole life looking up to her. So these kind of things are really cool, and. If they can bring more moments like that in my life, they can do the same for other women. 
You take moments like this to realize how far we've come and how we've grown, not only as females, but you want to look at you as an individual. And I look at where I started and having all the men around me who were so amazing and so supportive, who helped get me there. John Green had this idea. This game coincided with International Women's Day and he had an idea to bring on a women's broadcast crew. So he talked to us about it. We all thought it was a great idea. And here we are. There wasn't really much to go on. Not a lot of people have had all female broadcast teams. I scoured the internet, I scoured LinkedIn, all kinds of places to try to put something together. And I think I put together one of the best teams in the OHL. I'm very proud of the fact that broadcasting seems to have been ahead of the curve as far as women in sports, but I find it was more so on the sports news or sports desk type of role. Live event coverage, maybe less more so, play by play. Uh, color commentary. I think there's room for women to make headway. Hopefully it spurs them to uh, to continue on in the broadcasting industry and what has been kind of a male dominated field when it comes to hockey and sports broadcasting in general and women don't have to be just sideline reporters. You can get behind the mic uh, and do play by play. Before the generals head back to the power play. Tulio is shot from out of nowhere. This one catches prop off guard. Listen, most of us who are in the broadcast industry, uh, who are doing play-by-play, -play, have not played the game at the high level. So if, if that was the argument for women not being in there, then that argument's gone. It doesn't really matter. It's time for equality there. Obviously, it's just a, a critical element to presentation is to be more diverse, whether it's gender, whether it's uh, background, uh, to inform your point of view, just to complete you. Uh, and I'm really grateful that that's happening. It's uh, a bit of a slow go, but I, I feel like it's, uh, it's happening in a big way. I was at home laying low, uh, just kind of unwinding after the Friday, and my phone blew up and I knew something happened. In Oshawa last night on Sportsnet, we did the broadcast of an OHL game, which you may have heard, with an all-female broadcast team. My jaw dropped. I had no idea it was coming. Didn't know that kind of shout-out was coming, and uh, didn't really know the kind of feedback I was going to get immediately. Like, there's a lot of eyes on that program, especially before a Leafs game. Uh, and the number of people who reached out to me immediately after it happened was pretty cool. My partner, Norm, and I, I think we looked up at the TV at the same time, and I kind of yelped, and everyone around me looked at me like, thought, what happened to this girl? Is she okay? Is she losing her mind? And I pointed and said, that's me! And Norm said, there, I see you! And then by the time everyone looked at the TV, I was gone. I was overwhelmed. I couldn't really wrap my head around it at the time. I didn't realize that was going to happen. And I didn't realize what an impact it was until the next day, truly. I get a call from my mom and she's like, well, your dad just said he saw you on Hockey Night in Canada. And I was just speechless. And I, I was like, what? like this can't be right. Like there's, she's messing with me in some way. And then it was like, ding, 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 ding on my phone and just all of the people who supported me up into that point of doing the broadcast, it was like, we just saw you on Hockey Night, turn on Hockey Night, video, video, video. And uh, it was so overwhelming. To see myself standing with the three other women uh, that were a part of this all-women broadcast, if you work hard and your, your dreams might actually come true, and even if it's just 10 seconds on Hockey Night in Canada, it's still 10 seconds of your dream, and that means that you're just that much closer.